Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 24th, 2022, current on 2.40 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a new tropical cyclone to be forming across the tropical Atlantic over the next several days, just how strong it could get and where it will go. Well, let's go ahead and find out. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have something of interest beginning to happen. Down here in the deep tropics, very unusual for this time of the year, we have a new system being classified as Invest Area 94L. This is a new tropical wave that emerged off the coast of Africa just a few days ago and is now moving westward at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. This will be moving generally in the direction of the Lesser Antilles and the Eastern Caribbean over the next several days, and there will be some potential for this to become a tropical cyclone. As I look here at the NHC forecast, this is from this morning at 8 a.m., but this still stands as of 2 p.m. this afternoon. We notice that the area of interest is right down here. Again, moving off to the west and northwest here at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Now, this is expected to move into the Caribbean and impact portions of the Lesser Antilles, including Trinidad, Tobago, uh, and Barbados over here. This is the area where we could see the most uh, impacts from this system as it begins to interact with that area uh, sometime early to mid next week. Around Tuesday to Wednesday-ish is when we could expect to see impacts to that region. Now, if we take a look here, again, who's most at risk? Well, again, this is the system here, and it'll be generally moving towards the west-northwest over the next several days. And the most area that I'm seeing for concern right now is going to be really the central and southern island chain right here. Generally speaking, Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, all of these areas here are at the most risk for impacts. The northern part of the island chain, I do believe, will probably spare impacts from this uh, potential system. Now, again, development here is not necessarily certain, and we'll talk about that right now. Take a look here at the visible satellite imagery. We noticed that we have a couple of things going on within the immediate vicinity. First of all, not related to the Invest 94L, but we have another system back here that uh, is a tropical wave that has emerged off of Africa as well. Now, this is not being classified as anything or designated as an invest. However, the national or not the National Hurricane Center, but some of the models uh, ran from the numerical weather predictions up in Washington, D.C. and, and, and other numerical guidances, the, the European GFS, etc., have continued to hint on potential development with this as well. So we'll have to watch this very closely. But with Invest Area 94L, we notice that it's not as convectively active as it was uh, the past couple of days. Convection has certainly waned, and a large percentage of that owes to just the fact that this is June, late June climatology in the main development region is not all that supportive. But we notice that there's still relatively deep moisture across here where thunderstorms are bubbling at the diurnal minimum, which is the time where convection is at its least and, and coverage spatially. And then we also have this dry air to the north, but this isn't really getting ingested into the storm at this point. If we take a look here at the GFS forecast, this is the 12Z run, the 850 millibar vorticity. So the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet off the ground. And again, the darker oranges and reds indicate a healthier low pressure system. So what we notice here is that on the GFS forecast, this actually struggles to develop uh, in really once it gets to the islands at this point, development is still somewhat uncertain as the model doesn't really pick up on much development with that. There's also a new system that we'll be watching over the next couple of days. While this hasn't officially been tagged by NHC at this point, uh, this will be from a, uh, a kind of an, an old decaying front that will be moving across the southeast U.S. And eventually this uh, could see an area of low pressure try to sneak underneath this with plenty of warm water and low shear, I wouldn't be surprised to potentially see a new system form out here in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, but so far, again, that hasn't been tagged, so our main focus is going to be on 94L at this point. Once this crosses the islands, the 94L it is, it looks like that development chances do potentially increase here. The GFS uh, goes for a system developing out here in the Western Caribbean, kind of the, the Central and Western Caribbean, and this eventually tracks towards Central America here. Now, a large uh, thing here is going to be just how strong uh, the ridge of high pressure is over across the Southeast US. Right now, we're taking a look here at the 500 millibar geopotential heights, basically the strengths of the ridge and the trough in the atmosphere at about 18,000 feet off the ground. 
And we notice here that there's a very strong ridge over portions of the southeast U.S., and that actually is amplified a little bit over time. We notice that uh, we get kind of these very dark red kind of burgundy colors. This indicates that we have a very strong ridge of high pressure over the Gulf of Mexico and over the U.S. at this point. So basically the flow is trying to send anything into Central America. And that's going to be something that is going to be hard to contend with. Now on the GFS forecast in the long range, this trough or th this ridge actually begins to break down. There's a, a pretty good trough over here across the Canadian prairies that breaks down some of this ridge over here and allows the storm to sneak just a tad bit further north. And that is certainly possible, but certainly not something that is going to be necessarily likely. Now, if we look at the European forecast, again, the Euro is kind of on the same idea with a storm here by day five, uh, just crossing the island chain and then moving into portions of Central America. So by all means, it certainly looks like we could have a storm in that vicinity. Now, the upper level environment is going to be pretty favorable. If we take a look at the GFS and the 200, the GFS ensembles and the 200 millibar wind pattern uh, for day five here, we notice that we actually have generally easterly winds across the entire Caribbean. And even though there is a displaced anti-cyclone over here, it's actually not all that bad because the wind is coming from west to east or generally speaking from east to west rather. And what this is actually going to do, it's going to align with the storm's forward motion and that will allow for shear to be unconditionally uh, supportive for a storm to develop and certainly something um, that is very anomalous because we don't see these type of patterns uh, really in late June at all. We would expect the Caribbean to be very sheared and not conducive for tropical cyclone formation. That is the complete opposite here. And there's also going to be a nice bout of moisture. We noticed that if we look at the precipitable water anomalies, they are in the green here. So that indicates above average uh, moisture in this environment, which goes to support the idea that anything that does try to form in here will have a pretty favorable environment. Now, the only thing that's going to have to monitor here is the trade winds. Uh, with some of the trades here uh, at, at 850, suggesting maybe about 15 to 25 knots, that is certainly going to be a little bit on the stronger end and maybe something that will not allow for significant development. Uh, now, the other thing, again, if this stays relatively weak and does not develop until past the islands, this is a surefire bet to cross into Central America because the weaker the system is, the more it's going to be influenced by those low-level trade winds, uh, which is generally forcing everything into Central America. If we look at the European Ensemble forecast, we notice that generally the 0Z European Ensembles take most of the members uh, anywhere from Barbados down to Trinidad and Tobago uh, in Grenada down here in the very southern portion of the islands and then continue that into the western part of the Caribbean. Sea surface temperatures in this area are very warm as well with sea surface temperatures being about 27 to 28 Celsius, very supportive uh, for a storm to develop in, in the upper ocean heat content as well is very supportive, especially once it gets into the West Caribbean. Those uh, values up here are very conducive for additional strengthening. Uh, and that certainly goes to indicate what the ship's diagnostic forecast is showing. Now, keep in mind here, that the ship's diagnostical forecast is not a given and it is a statistical, not a dynamical model. So there will be limitations and it is not so good with invests. However, it is still something that we can look to see the environment. Uh, this is courtesy of cyclonicwx.com. We notice that we have a storm, kind of the, the track forecast in here generally keeps us in the southern part of the island chain through here. And we also notice that the wind speed here does exceed hurricane intensity uh, as it is doing so at this particular time as well. And the upper ocean heat content and everything else like that looks to be very favorable and overall it seems like the relative humidity will also be relatively favorable, it never drops below 60%, which indicates a very favorable environment at that particular point. And the wind shear as well, you notice that the wind shear here will be relatively light, especially in the Caribbean. There's virtually no shear out here in the Caribbean, maybe at best five to 10 knots. It's certainly not really significant uh, to induce much of any weakening, especially uh, if this is already a you know well-organized 
uh, you know, tropical storm or hurricane at that particular point. So again, bottom line is there could be a storm approaching the island chain here by early to mid next week, probably looking at a time frame of about Wednesday or about Tuesday going into Wednesday. There could be a tropical depression, storm, or potentially nothing, um, but either way, gusty winds and heavy rainfall, the potential for mudslides and flash flooding are all coming to the island and all coming to the southern you know, portions of the Windward Islands. So everybody there needs to be, you know, taking precautions and certainly, you know, just reviewing your hurricane preparedness plan and just always be prepared because you just never know. All right. So that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.